Hi everyone, it's Kira and welcome back to my channel. So FIA F2 have now completed about half of the championship. It is the summer break, so I thought I would do what I done last year, sit down and put all the drivers into a tier list to see, kind of rank how their season's gone so far, whether they've been lucky, whether they've been unlucky, whether they've done really bad, whether they've done really well. And just make a tier list. You know I'll have a tier list on this channel, so I'm just gonna do another one. This is just another excuse to do one. Before I get into the video and start the tier list, if you do enjoy the video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below. And as always, I will leave the link to the tier list at the end so you can create your own. Okay, so here is my tier list. At the top, I've got in for the championship. Quite literally, you are in for a shot for this championship. Then I've got impressive exclamation mark. This means you've done a really good job. You've been quite impressive and all round okay. And then I've got acceptable performances. Quite literally, you've done some, you know, they're acceptable, but they're not the best, but they're acceptable. Then I've got so unlucky, because I feel like a lot of the drivers this year have been quite unlucky, so I thought I'd put that in there. You know, you've had a very unlucky year, and not necessarily your fault, but maybe it might be your fault, but it's kind of been unlucky. And the last one is, please leave. Like, get out of the championship. But anyway, let's get started. First, we have got Jack Aitken. Now, Jack has been in and out of the championship. We had a bit of a musical chairs kind of couple of rounds in. Jack... I always say F2 without Jack Aitken is like a cheese toasty without cheese. Um, but I don't know where to put him at the moment because obviously he's in a lower down car, but at the same time, he he is, he is Jack Aitken. I'm actually just... I'm going to put him in acceptable performances because he's not done anything amazing, but at the same time, he he has just stepped in. Like, it's last minute and he's not in a great car, but he is he's doing a good job. Next, we have got Marcus Armstrong, who is with Dams. And Marcus has just been... He's been unlucky a lot of the time, but at the same time, he's also just not performing. I was really hopeful that this move to Dams might kind of fix whatever woes he had last year at ART, but so far, it's kind of probably just been worse. But overall, I think I'm going to put him in so unlucky because he has had a lot of accidents and he's had a lot of things that maybe wouldn't be his fault. So it'd be interesting to see where he would be in this championship if he were to have a clean sale. So I'm going to put him in so unlucky. Next, we've got David Beckman, who is with Sharus. And oh my goodness, David Beckman has been so impressive. He was quite impressive in FIA F3, but he wasn't like overly impressive. So to see him step up and do so amazingly well, especially in a Sharus, which honestly, Sharus. Um, he's been so good, like so good. He's currently 13th in the championship, which you just would not expect from a Charus. So honestly, I think he's just doing really well. And I'm going to put him in impressive. I mean, he's not in for the championship, but he has really impressed me. And next we've got Ralph Bosch on, who is with Campos. And I mean, Ralph's story in itself is just amazing. You know, he tries so hard every single year to get his funds up to come back to F2. He is in and out like a yo-yo, but he is really, really impressed me this year. Like normally Ralph, obviously he's in a back marker team, but normally Ralph will come in and he'll never quite get there. But he's been so close this year. So many times he's been running fourth and he's nearly had that podium. So hopefully it comes to him soon and he can get up there. But honestly, I'm really, really impressed with his driving. A lot of the time, sometimes Ralph's been a bit of a touch and go driver he has created some incidents but again this is i'm talking like three three years ago now so he has obviously matured and he's came back very level-headed and he's doing a very good job so ralph very impressive next we've got jayhan duravala and oh, jayhan again he's kind of like marcus i was really hoping that his year this year would be better for him but oh it's just not it's just not i mean last year i thought oh you know it's just a bad year and obviously he had that conspiracy with the engine going wrong last year which everyone thought you know well that that, that did affect him and it affected Callum a lot and other drivers as well so i thought oh jayhan's definitely going to come in this year and he's going to smash it but he just hasn't ah oh, now i feel like i should have done one which was like unimpressive and I just, I, d I don't want to say please leave. I do not want to say that to Jayhan. But are they acceptable performances? I don't know. But he's not been unlucky. I think I'm going to have to put him in acceptable performances. But he's in between acceptable performances and please leave at this point. And I love you, Jayhan. I'm really sorry I have to say that. But it's just been un unimpressive. It really has. Next, Alessio Dillada. You know what? As much as you could be like, you know, he's wasted a sea. He's a mess. He's so funny. And he's so entertaining. And... Sometimes I think, sit there and I think, oh, there could be so many other drivers that could have your seat that deserve it. But it's not F2 without having those drivers that are just there for the shits and giggles. Like, it really, it, it, it just isn't the same. Like, you're just not going to have a championship in F2 without having a couple of them drivers. And Deleda is that driver. And you know what? He's actually not caused 
I don't think he's caused any pileups this year, which is very contrary to what he'd done in F3, where he was just crashing in left, right, and center. He's just considerably a lot slower than the other drivers. So I'm going to put him in please leave because I don't think I could put him any higher. But honestly, he's amusing. He's really amusing. Next, we have got Felipe Dragovic and really impressive this guy like i knew he was good like i knew he was impressive from a couple of years ago and when i saw that he was moving up to you and i i thought this is such a good move for him because they are a top team in f2 and i feel like they can really give him the support that he needs and yeah he's doing so well i feel like he has been quite an up and down driver and he's not quite at the tail end of everything but i think he is a very solid driver for this year um i wouldn't say he's in for this championship now i think he he's fallen off a little bit too much he's a little bit too inconsistent but when he has a good day he has a really good day so that's what's really annoying but he's been very impressive so i'm gonna put him in impressive Next, we have got the man which is eighth in the championship, and that is Liam Lawson for high tech. Liam, again, it's been really impressive this year. I really rate Liam, and I think he has had a really good year. Stepping up from F3 to F2 isn't always the easiest thing, but I think he's adapted really well. And he is technically in for this championship. And I don't want to say that he's not in for it, but he kind of is, but I think it's just slightly out a little bit too much. Piastro is on 108 points, and he's on 58 points. So he has got a little bit to do to catch up. So I think I'm just going to put Liam in impressive, but he's really impressed me. I think he's done some amazing drives this year and he's a class driver. Like if you know me, you know, I rate Liam Lawson so highly. So for me, very impressive. Next, we have got Christine Lingard, who is another very unlucky driver. Um, I feel like the cursed ART seat that he didn't have last year, he has got it this year. I definitely feel like he is that second driver in ART this year and it's not really working for him. He has had so much unlucky spells and he's just had a lot of incidents and just things that he just doesn't want i think he really wanted to go and win this championship this year and it's just not happened but unfortunately that's just what that's the risk you kind of run with art i don't know what it is about that second seat but it's so cursed so he's gonna go in so unlucky because it's been unlucky next we've got Matteo Nanini who was a bit of a meme last year in FIA F3 and he's been in and out this year I think he had the budget and his mum was like not having the budget anymore but now he's now back in with a different team and I, mean, I don't really know what's going on but Matteo Nanini is back and honestly in F2 he has been unimpressive and he is currently running FIA F3 alongside of it and I don't want to say he's been bad because I don't think he's been bad but considering the performances he's putting in in f3 i really feel like maybe he should put his focus there so that's why i'm kind of sitting here thinking mm, maybe i should put him in please leave just for the fact that i think you should focus on this f3 this year get yourself sorted and come back a little bit stronger so he's gonna go and please leave which i feel really bad for because i think he's not done that bad but fia f3 you've done amazing like you've done really well next we've got roy nasani um roy 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 he has scored 12 points this season, but honestly, he's not done anything too impressive. I like Roy, he's not, but he's not like a malicious driver. He does make some oopsies and he's not the fastest. I'm probably still going to put him in please leave though, just for the fact that he doesn't really bring anything to the table. He's not anything that exciting. Yeah, he's got a lot of money and obviously that's way, you know, the way he's built himself up. I don't think he's an awful driver. Like I've said this before, I don't think Roy Nassani is a bad driver. I think he's quite a competent driver, but for me, I just don't really see his place in this championship anymore. So I'm going to put him in please leave. Next, we have Oscar Piastri, who I am so excited for, if you can't tell by my voice. And this man's going straight to the top. He is in for this championship. He is currently the championship leader. And if you saw my predictions video, which if you didn't, I will link up here or in the description box. I betted him for the championship. He is just such an incredible driver and I back him over anything. And he has proved his worth in F2. A lot of people call me stupid for putting a rookie to win the championship this year. But I was really adamant that he was gonna do really, really well. My doorbell has just gone. Two seconds, everyone. It was my mum, why she couldn't put her key in the door, I don't know. But anyway, back to it, Oscar Piastri. Yeah, I'm really backing him for this championship. Think he's gonna win this. I, I'm, I, I have nothing else to say other than I rate him so highly. Next, we have got his championship rival from last year in Teo Porcher. Teo, what an impressive driver. Honestly, really, really good. I, I have no bad things to say about him. I think he's dipped and he's been up and down a little bit this year. I'm out of breath from going down the stairs, you guys. But I really think that he has got a shot for this championship. I feel like he's, he's, quite, he's slightly out of reach, but I think I'm going to put him up there purely for the fact that there's a lot of links to him to the Sauber seat next year. And obviously, Alfa Romeo slash Sauber have full control over their driver lineup next year, meaning that Ferrari don't have a say in it. And he's doing some tests with uh, Sauber as well. So 
I think I want to put him. I really want to put him for the championship. He is in between impressive and for the championship. But you know what? I don't want to leave Oscar up there by himself. So I'm going to put Teo up there because I could easily see him turning this around. Like last year, he came out of nowhere to be completely honest with you and came second in the championship. So it could easily happen again. Gilher Mistamaya is next for Sharus, and Gilher quite literally needs to leave. He arguably is worse than the letter no that's a bit rude he is worse than the nini he's definitely worse than more than i just see his, like no place for him i think the only thing he won before is i want to say it was f3 lights in brazil and then he just came over so he must have a lot of money please leave i he doesn't do anything he does absolutely nothing the boy does nothing the man does nothing so he's going to please leave next we've got marino sato and i've spoken about him before in other videos i'm really disappointed because i think that when he came over to europe he had quite a big mm, not hype around him but i think a lot of people thought more of him and thought he would do more he's been retained in f2 for a couple of years now but he's done absolutely nothing obviously he is in a back car but his teammates are always doing better than him and he is making a lot of silly mistakes which i wouldn't expect him to still be doing so i am also going to put him in please leave which actually means that that is the biggest tier currently with five of them in there so <laughs> i promise i won't put too many more in there um but yeah he just doesn't do anything now and i think that that's see especially with some trident drivers that are coming up in f3 like clement novelak or even jack Doohan. i think there's some drivers from trident that they would preferably like to put up next year and they can't do that if sato was just there next we've got robert schwartzman and i'm so happy to see robert schwartzman doing better this year last year i backed him for the championship and that went very very west but you know what i think he's doing a really good job this year and he's pulling out of the bag i still think there's certain bits that aren't quite going right for him but i think overall i think he's having quite a good year he is third in the championship and well in to win this championship he is in the premier so you do expect it but nevertheless i think he's doing an amazing job he's absolutely in for this championship there's no way that he isn't i uh, it really depends on what's going to happen. I feel like he might be slightly out of shot, but I think it'd be very good if he does. And I think it would be quite a headache for Ferrari to then kind of place him and know where to do, what to do with him. But again, that's the same story for Alpine if Oscar or Joe win the championship. So yeah, Robert, really good this year. Very impressive. And I like it. Next, we have got Dan Tickton. And Dan is doing such a good job this year. I think last year he had a lot of ups and downs. And he wasn't very happy last year with dams. So the move over to Carlin this year, I think, is very good and very strong for him. I think he's a lot happier there. I think he knows the team a little bit better. And he's doing really well. He's fourth in the championship, which you just wouldn't expect. But I think he's just been very consistent. He's had some good points and... I don't know if he's in for this championship. I'd like to say he is because I think he said that, you know, if he doesn't win this championship this year, it's over for him. So I would like to say he is in the championship, but I think I'm just going to have to put him in impressive. I can't see Dan quite having the edge over some of the other drivers, um, but he's been very impressive this year. And that is the Dan that I think we all have been waiting to see. And I hope it continues because he's doing really well. Next, we've got Richard Fashore, who has literally been living race by race. He doesn't know whether he's in the seat every single race after every single one of them because he is going race by race because he doesn't have the budget and it's a shame because Richard for sure has done such an amazing job this year he's been really impressive the moves he's been making are incredible and I honestly think he deserves this seat full time so Richard for sure I'm going to put him in impressive again the MP car isn't the best car on the grid in whether that's in F3 or F2 it's not the most competitive car but he's really brought that car up and it's it's been a great look for him and i think he's doing really well and i think that he has got a lot of dutch fans behind him and he's doing really well so he's been really impressive now next we have got Yuri Vips, our favorite man i love him i love him and he's done very well this year i think i was slightly expecting a little bit more but i think he he's done quite well i think you know he's up there with liam i think him and liam are quite on par this year and he's just been amazing. I think I rate Eurovips so highly. And he's just been really impressive. Again, he's not far off the championship as well. Like, this could go anywhere. If he picks himself up, he could easily win this championship. Um, I don't know if I want to put him for the championship or not, though. I kind of do, but I don't. I feel like I might do, just because I think he's higher than these other... Oh, but that's rude, because Dan's in impressive. Oh, I don't care. Sorry. I love Eurovips so much. And I think everyone will vouch for that as well. I think he's such a good driver. Again, it could dip again, but I'm sure... I'm quite confident that he won't. Coming down to our final couple of drivers now. Next, we've got Bent Viscal. And Bent Viscal has done such a good job. Again, as I said, the Trident is such kind of a backmarker car in F2. But he's really bringing that car up and... I think he's doing a really good job this year. Obviously, he done well in F3 last year. He had a win in Hungary that then got taken away from him, which is such a shame, but he kind of still showed his potential. And obviously, he's got that move up to F2 this year. And I'm really impressed with him. The points obviously may not reflect everything that he's done this year, but I think compared to his teammate, he's doing a very good job. So I'm, I'm actually, 
I'm going to put him in impressive, which I know is probably controversial, but purely for the fact that the car he's in, he's really dragging it up there. They're kind of the same as David Beckman. He's really dragging that car up there where it probably shouldn't be there. So that's kind of why I would put him there. Now, next we have got Lorenzo Zendeli. And Lorin for me, hasn't done anything that interesting this year. I kind of didn't expect him to because he wasn't overly impressive in F3 last year. And obviously his teammate, Rich Vershaw, has kind of outshone him in that MP kind of inter-team battle, if you will. I don't think he's done anything too impressive this year. I think he's got like seven points on the board or something. So nothing too amazing. Um, so I'm probably going to put him in acceptable performances because he's not, you know, kick out worthy. But it's not the best. And finally, we have got none other than Guan Yu Zhou. Now, if you watched my channel last year, I backed him for the championship. Did I back him for the championship? I think I backed Joe for the championship. Now I can't remember because I think I said that about Rob. Maybe I didn't. I think I did. I backed him for somewhere high up in the championship anyway. And that really went bad. And even in my predictions this year, because of last year, it kind of tarnished how I felt. And I thought, oh, mm, I feel like he's not going to get any wins this year. Well, he has proved me wrong. And I'm so glad about that. Guan Yu Zhou has been very impressive this year. And he has been the driver that I knew he was. And I think a lot of people knew that he was. So I think he's done a very good job to get himself up there. He's P2 in the championship and he's fighting himself up there and I can easily see him winning this championship. Again, you've got a little bit of a battle between the Alpine young drivers here and I'm really not sure what Alpine are going to do because they don't have a place in Formula 1 for either of them next year. But when you've got both of them battling for the championship, they are going to need to do something about it. So I'm going to put him in for the championship, of course. Really impressive and he's just doing the job he needs to do and I'm loving that. So there we have it, that is it for today's video and that is my final tier list for how I rank the drivers so far in F2. As you can see, there's kind of the ones that need to leave, there are some of the ones that have been really impressive. Again, this could completely change by the end of the year, you don't know how anyone's second half of the season is going to go. But they're the kind of main protagonists I think could win this championship. Might be Dan though, might be Liam, I don't know. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about F2 so far this season. I know it's been quite difficult to get into because the layout has been quite different this year. So I do feel you guys, but if you've got any questions about F2 or if you want anything answered, anything like that, then do leave me questions down below or just leave your thoughts. I would love to have a chat with you guys and help you guys out. But yeah, thanks again for watching this video. Like and subscribe and I will see you again soon. Bye. Yeah.